Good day, my great scholars. You are welcome back to the online class for JS1 PHE for sixth week. My last topic with you was short foods and discourse. They are under field event, under track. This is a throwing event. And it is being played by both boys and girls. We are to put the shorts and throw the discourse. All the two games are under field events. For this topic, again, for JS1, sixth week, you have volleyball. You can see it on the screen, volleyball. At the end of the lesson today, you should be able to narrate the history of volleyball. You should be able to describe the nature of volleyball. State the rules and regulations involved in the game and the officials involved in the game. Those are the four points I want you to know at the end of the lesson today. Let me quickly show you a, script, a picture of some ladies playing volleyball. Can you see it? This is one of the officials, the lady up here. This is one of the officials of the game. That is that. Now let us go to the history of the game. The history of the game of volleyball. Volleyball is a lively game. It is fun and enjoy, enjoyment. You can enjoy it. It is a game that you enjoy while doing it. Now to the history. The game of volleyball was introduced by Dr. William Smogan in 1895 at Holy Oak, United States of America. There was a conference put up for YMCA, meaning Young Men Christian Association, in the year 1896. Then William Smogan was their PHE instructor in that conference. So he introduced the game of volleyball to them in that conference in that year, in 1896. It was a recreational game. For those that are in the conference then, they enjoy playing it because it doesn't require a last phase before you can perform it. They were happy doing it in that conference. Then, Dr. Williamson thought as well that this game should be brought out of the conference again to so many people. And it was done by him. So in 1897, the rules of volleyball was published because there is no game that doesn't have rules. So the rules of volleyball was introduced in that year, 1897. And because Mongan wanted a simple game for everybody, and we should be suitable for all categories of people, men, women, especially the middle age, businessmen and women. That was when he introduced the game of volleyball. And the intention was to produce an indoor game during winter season. That was his motive, an indoor game during winter season. We should involve a large number of people. That was why it is mainly for the middle age businessmen and women then before it is being introduced to the large number of people. In 1947, the World Governing Body of Volleyball was formed and it was called International Volleyball Federation. Like we have football, Nigerian Football Association, uh, all different associations. So Volleyball too is having its own body, which is International Volleyball Federation or Federation of International Volleyball, the way you want to, you want to call it. 
1964, volleyball was allowed to feature in the Olympic, in the Olympic then, in that year. It was allowed to feature in the Olympic game that was held in Tokyo, Japan. And in 1965, the first volleyball federation was formed in Lagos, which means in Nigeria, it was in Lagos, the first volleyball federation was formed, and it was in Lagos in 1965. So therefore, in 1970, the Nigerian Volleyball Federation was officially inaugurated, with J.C. Omaran as the first chairman. And the game has continued to grow and develop fast in the country, that is in Nigeria. It is developing fast because it is being played by all middle ages. The importance of this volleyball is that it demands a little space for you to perform it. And it is a game that is ideal for schools and colleges. When you are playing it, it's a right fun and enjoyment for the participants and even those that are watching. And it requires cheap material for you to perform it. What are the materials? You need your, the ball, the volleyball, you need the net. If there is a little space that you have, you need the up, upright pole to hold the net, then the blood to be played. Why the participant, that is, those that are playing in the players, is for them to get their jersey, their canvas or trainers, whatever they want to, they want to put on to play. That is why ship materials is needed to play the game. It is an interesting game and easy to learn. It is fun and interesting to play. At the same time, it serves as an informal recreation game, which can be played by men, women, and children. Any major age, both men, women, and children can play it. It serves as an informal recreational game. It promotes good character training. Yes, you have to wait for good character training. When you want to play, you don't have to fight or you do anything. At the same time, it's a good conditioning game. When we say good conditioning game, it teaches me how to take turns. That is, I want to play, I have to wait. You play to me, I play to you, I play to the opponent. It is not what you just have to play. Like when you are playing football, you quickly rush the football, you rush to the no. When the ball is with you, you have to take turns. Turns in play. I make sure by the time you play three times in your own, with your team, you have to send it back to the opponent. So you have to take turns in playing with. Those are the importance of the game. Now let us move to the nature of the game. When we talk about the nature of the game, like football, we say football is being played by 22 players. Yes, the skill you have to kick, you have to edge like that. So the nature of game too, when you say, so that when they are playing, you know that what they are playing is a volleyball game, it is a team game. It is not a game that you can play alone. You can't play it alone, you have to play with somebody. So that's why it's referred to as a team game. It's the point scoring game, yes. By the time you serve, and you did serve very well, it is a point scoring game for the other team game. Your opponent is the point scoring game. So when you did not serve very well, it is a point. When you do not receive very well, it is a point. It is a recreational game. It is being played by both boys, girls, old and young. It is an outdoor and indoor game at the same time. Don't forget I said it's quite a small space. So you can play it outdoor, you can play it indoor. Because it's quite a small place. It is a game that involves smashing. Wow. Let me show you. A player. Smashing. When you say smashing, it is not kicking, it is not lifting, 
bouncing or carrying, it involves smashing when you are playing it. And when you want to play, 12 players play at a time. Six from each team to the right, six team to the left. You pass, you smash to them. You pass immediately. You don't hold on to it or you lift it or you kick it. It is an offense. Can you see the other player too? Can you see the lady? Can you see the posture for playing, jumping up and bah? That is how to play it. Now let us move to the basic skills. There is no game that doesn't have skills in play. Football has kicking, heading, passing, dribbling. So volleyball, you have passing, you have spiking, you have blocking, you have digging and starving. But passing is the often taught. It is the most important skills in volleyball. You pass, you learn to pass. That's smashing, playing. So those are the six skills, but passing is the, the most skilled in it. So if you can't pass the serve, then you won't put your team in a position to score a point. When you're able to put pass the serve, that's the point for your team. That is under skills, you can see. Can you see these four people? Passing smashing like that all the skills there you can see it on them now the officials that are involved in the game of volleyball the referees there the second referees the scorers and the line judges don't forget the referee controls the game of volleyball not only with all games is being controlled by the referee is the one in charge his decision is the final. So the same thing applies to volleyball. Is the referee decision is the final. The first referee takes charge. Why the second referee is there? In the picture that I showed you, let me quickly show you the picture again. Where a lady was there standing. Here. The lady there is one of the line judges that will tell them if the ball has gone away from the line or it is offline. Can you see there is a stand there for him, for him or her to stand on so that it can really see the way the ball is being passed to the other, other team. So Those are the four officials that are involved in the game. The scorer is there that scores them. That scores them. And the game that the, the team that wants the game, if the point scoring is 10-10, there is no there is no winner. But if the score is 16-14, if a, a team is having two points ahead of the opponent, which means the team is the winner. There should be a two-pointer edge for you to be a winner. Like I've said, 16-14, 12-10, Yes, two-pointer edge should be there for you to be the winner. Now let us move to the rules and regulations of the game. There is no game without rules and regulations. These are the rules of volleyball. Points are scored during service and receiving. If you do not serve very well, point goes to your opponent. If you do not receive very well, point goes to your opponent. So there is always a point when serving and receiving. And all service should be airborne. What do you mean by airborne? That it should be, it should be in the air. air. Air, When you want to play, you want to serve, you serve in the air. That is why it's really referred to as airborne. Because you have to serve in the air. And no player is allowed to carry or you lift the ball. You have to pass immediately. It has been passed to you. You just have to pass it. When you lift or you carry or you catch, it constitutes a foul. That is a foul. And a team is being allowed three times, consecutive time to play. 
or to pass before giving it to the opponent. You can touch it three times in your own thing. One, two, three. Now, one team I played to the second to the third. After the third, the ball must come out from your own court to the opponent's court. If not, you will lose your points. So, you only allow three consecutive touches of the ball before it is returned to the opponent's court. I believe with this, you really understand what volleyball is. If you have been called upon to say the history of volleyball, you will know how to remember the year 1960 when the ball was introduced in Nigeria and in 1970, officially inaugurated, officially the volleyball was inaugurated and Jason Moran is the first chairman and William Morgan is the person that introduces the game of volleyball and the motive is so that all middle ages and businessmen can take part in playing it. And we have four officials involved in it, the referee, the first referee, second referee, the scorer, and the four or two line judges. And we have the game of volleyball nation, which is the point scoring game, a team game, a, a game played by 12 players and we have six player that makes up a team. Make sure you go back to the school online to copy your notes. See you during next class and make sure you do your assignment. See you, stay blessed.